What is up, everybody? Vital Syntax here, playing some more Battlefield 3, and this is another game of Team Deathmatch on Tehran Highway, and I'm using the M16A3. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the different maps in the game, uh, different game modes. Uh, but before I get into that stuff, quickly you'll notice that there is a new overlay or a new layout for the videos. Uh, this one and the previous one, and hopefully for future ones as well. Uh, where I have an overlay that shows what weapon I'm using, what class I'm playing as, what piece of equipment, and what piece of specialization I'm using. On top of that, I also added the official Battlefield 3 soundtrack, which I got from Amazon. So let me know what you guys think about that. Do you guys like it? Do you guys dislike it? Do you have any suggestions? Because as my viewers, I definitely take everything you guys have to say into consideration. So um, anyway, this is Tehran Highway. We're playing Team Deathmatch, and in Team Deathmatch, this map is quite closed off. There's only this upper section of the freeway available. If you play this in Conquest, uh, basically this entire area is open, uh, and if you play it in Rush, then you've got two other huge sections in the map that are that are opened up. So, as a whole, this map's actually quite large in something like Rush, um, but they downscale it obviously for different game modes uh, to fit those different play styles. Now, um, Conquest is my primary game mode, that's mostly what I play, but for these uh, YouTube videos I like to play either Team Deathmatch or Squad Deathmatch because the length of the video fits uh, much better. A Conquest match can go upwards of 25 to 30 minutes, whereas something like Team Deathmatch or Squad Deathmatch is only going to last 5 to 10 minutes, uh, and that's perfect length for YouTube. So you'll probably see mostly Team Deathmatch and Squad Deathmatch unless I cut some uh, Conquest or brush maps up into pieces. But in Conquest, um, this map is pretty bad. It's actually probably one of my least favorite maps in the game. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is that this map always seems to have lag issues. And I don't know if that's just me. Let me know if you've had any bad experiences with that. But I've played on multiple servers where everything is totally going totally fine when we're playing different maps. And every time this map comes up in the, the rotation, it, it suddenly starts uh, spiking in lag. And it's... It's very, very hard to play when it's lagging. And I don't know if that's an issue in regards to the destruction, the terrain destruction like they had in the beta, um, or if it's some other type of issue in the full game. But if you guys have had that same issue, let me know. But the second issue I have with this map is that it almost always seems to have one team or the other team spawn trapping in Conquest. And the reason for that is because you can, if you take all of the flags, um, you can push the enemy up into their spawn point and you can basically cut them off, uh, do a bottleneck so they can't even get out of their spawn point. Um, and I've done this multiple times with the enemy's teammates, you know, even if they hit some tanks or things like that, you can just line the roads with C4 and anti-tank mines and they're basically stuck in there. But majority of the time when I play this map, I'm the one getting spawn trapped and that's really frustrating. I mean, that's one of the worst things that can happen in Battlefield 3. Um, so this is, this is definitely one of my least favorite maps in the game, and I really haven't had any other issues with with much many of the other maps. As far as my favorite maps go, the first first one that comes to mind is Grand Bazaar. Uh, Grand Bazaar is close quarters, it's infantry based. Um, it's similar to Operation Metro in that sense that, you know, there's not a whole lot of vehicles. Uh, there are some light vehicles, no heavy tanks or helicopters or jets, anything like that. Uh, which I'm not saying I don't like those vehicles. It's just a nice change of pace from playing something like Caspian Border or Operation Firestorm, which are very, very, very uh, vehicle-based. And Grand Bazaar, uh, it's, it's a square map. So similar to uh, Operation Metro in the sense that it is infantry-based, but very different in the sense that it's uh, not a long linear map. Because Operation Metro is linear, it's very narrow, there's lots of choke points, lots of bottlenecks, and that's a, that's a big issue for me because if I can't walk around the corner without being afraid of being killed every single time, then there, there's an issue with the map. And if there's no way to flank, if there's no route that you can take that you're safe at, then I, I, I don't like that. I, I don't like being stuck um, behind a corner and every time I walk around I get I get killed. And that's what basically what a, um, a bottleneck um, is. So with Grand Bazaar, it's a square map. There's lots of different routes you can take. You can go around the you know, the whole entire edge of the map. You can flank the enemy team. There's tons of different routes you can take through the, the alleyways um, and corridors and things like that. And every single time I play that map, I always feel like I am free to move 
you know, any which way I want. I'm free to flank the enemy. I'm free to go head on. Um, and just everything about that map feels very, very good, and it's it's always fun to play. Uh, the second map that I would say is is in my in my favorite uh, list is Caspian Border, and the Caspian Border is that perfect balance between infantry and vehicle combat. Um, whereas something like Grand Bazaar is obviously focused on infantry, and Operation Firestorm is probably the most uh, vehicle focused map. I mean, if you're out in a tank or a helicopter or something like that, you feel exposed. You feel like you're gonna die basically. Um, whereas Caspian Border, it feels like um, it's a good mix of those two because there's lots of area between the different objectives, between those different flags on Conquest that um, are probably best fitted for a vehicle, but once you actually get onto those flags, for example at the hilltop or at the outpost or gas station, those are all the different sections and they have different names for the different flags of Caspian Border. Um, all of those different sections feel very infantry based because there's lots of buildings you can go into. There's lots of close quarters combat within those areas, and there's actually lots of places that uh, vehicles like tanks can't even access. Um, so I like that mix. I like the, be the ability to use a tank, um, but not feel um, obligated to. I can still run around with a shotgun or an assault rifle or even a submachine gun um, and still feel totally fine. Um, so onto the game modes, the, the one I've been playing most is obviously Conquest. Uh, the one I really haven't even touched it would be um, Squad Rush. And Squad Rush, I don't really know. I, I've never really played it too much. I haven't had much experience with that. From my, from my uh, previous knowledge, it seems like it's um, <clears throat> more set up for like really, really competitive teams that want to go head on with, um, with another squad. At least in Bad Company 2, I thought it was only 4v4, but I could be wrong. Um, I'll have to try that out again, but... Uh, one of the new games they've added, or game types they've added for Battlefield 3 is Team Deathmatch, and that's one we're playing right here. And they did have Squad Team Deathmatch in Bad Company 2, and the difference is Squad Team Deathmatch, there were four squads in the game, so a total of 16 players, and each squad fended for themselves. Um, there really was a lot of teamwork involved, you know, you had people reviving, people uh, dropping tons of uh, different support things for each other, um, and as a whole it felt like I was playing as a, as a team or as a squad. Uh, another thing you use is that you could actually spawn on your teammates. Now in Battlefield 3 with Team Deathmatch, it's quite different. Um, there's no spawning in your squad mates, which I thought was kind of strange at first, but when I thought about it more, it kind of made a little more sense, because they're trying to just basically copy what Call of Duty is doing, so spawning on your, spawning on your squad mates is something that Call of Duty has never really had, because uh, it does have, it does cause some issues, I guess, if you're, you know, in the middle of a, a battle and a, a guy is just spawning in with full health type of thing. Um, but on top of that, it, it also seems like everybody's kind of just fending for themselves. Um, everybody's kind of playing lone wolf, which is sometimes fun. It, it is a nice contrast, you know, always having to worry about the objective, always having to worry about your teammates and things like that. Uh, and that's definitely what they were going for. They're trying to basically make this game feel like Call of Duty. Because they know a lot of people play Call of Duty, and they know a lot of people are going to be picking up this game that are Call of Duty players. And I think that's actually a, a good choice from a design standpoint, from a marketing standpoint. And actually, I think it turned out very well, and it's actually quite fun to play. You know, obviously, it doesn't really feel like Battlefield. It doesn't have that same sense of teamwork, that same sense of, um, I don't know. It just feels like like you have different um, different roles, different play styles when you actually play a team deathmatch, which is a nice change of pace. Um, so let's see what else there's there. There's Rush, um, there's Conquest, there's Squad Rush. And actually, something I don't know if it's on the, the the consoles as well, but on the PC, there's two different types of rush. There's um, large ru or conquest, large, and just normal conquest. And I'm not 100% sure what the difference is. From my knowledge, I think the conquest large is the 64 player conquest, whereas the normal conquest is 32 players. But I could be wrong. If you know for sure, feel free to let me know. Uh, I actually be kind of interested in that. Because sometimes the the 64 player matches can get quite hectic, maybe even a little bit too hectic, and I actually think I might prefer the the 32 player uh, matches just because it feels a little more intimate. It feels a little bit more um, 
Like I can actually control what the what the end result of that match will be. Uh, so you can see I switched to my secondary here. This is the uh, MP443, same one that was in Bad Company 2, the Gratch, and by far my favorite pistol. Until I recently locked the G18 at level 30, and oh my god, the G18 is just it's uncomparable. I mean, unless you're using a, a pistol at long range, which I would suggest using the uh, the 44 uh, Magnum revolver for long range, but at close quarters, the G18 just completely rapes. Um, fully automatic, very, very high fire rate, <clears throat> and it seems to kill in just one or two more bullets from something like the M9 or something along those lines. And I'm using the M16A3, and there's actually an M16A4 in the game as well. And uh, similar to that, there's also the M4A1 and the M4. And don't get those mixed up with the M416. Uh, so the M16A3 is the one you start out with for the US side. It's actually quite good. I like it a lot. Uh, it's fully automatic or single fire. And the M16A4, which you unlock a little bit later down the lines, um, is a three round burst and single fire weapon. So the difference being fully automatic versus three round burst. And actually all of your unlocks, all of your attachments that you got for the M16A3 will carry over to the M16A4. And that's the same way it is with the the M4A1, which is fully automatic, and the M4, which is the three-round burst as well. So it's kind of interesting that they added those different options uh, for guns. It kind of would have made more sense in my eyes just to add a second fire fire mode, but maybe it's just more realistic. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to leave a rating, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.